Good evening, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's program. This is Sharp Points, a program based upon Proverbs 27 and verse 17 that declares, Iron sharpeneth iron, so doth a man sharpen it, the countenance of his friends. So you and I are here tonight to be made keen, to be made aware, to be made more alert as you and I unite in holy fellowship. Remember, the Bible says in 100 Psalms 105 and verse number 24, listen at Psalm 105 and verse 24. It says, and he, talking about God, increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Hallelujah. God wants us stronger than our enemies. He's increasing us greatly, both spiritually and naturally, so that we can be made stronger than our enemies. We told you this is a year being made fat, being faithful, having the right attitude and being teachable. And God is indeed performing his word so that we can be made stronger than our enemies. He wants you and I. To know that Jesus became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. In fact, if you and I don't do better spiritually and don't do better financially as a result of Jesus, then we have made his investment look in vain. We don't want that to happen. Let's make it count tonight. Get on that phone, text somebody, call somebody. Shout out, amen, to all of those that are watching tonight. Shout out to my man, Vincent Bellamy, on tonight, as well as Curtis Bryant watching tonight. Appreciate you, sir, as well as evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Oh, she did such a great teaching today. If you miss evangelist Jackie Bellamy's teaching on today, go back and listen to it. She did a tremendous teaching about crying. And how there are benefits in crying, how that, amen, there are many, many benefits in it, how it, the Go natural ahead. benefits and the spiritual benefits. Go Good teaching here. today. Go Shout out to you, woman of God, a great word from the Lord. Listen, all right, I need you to move quickly. We only got 30 minutes. Tag somebody, touch them, hit that like button, hit that share button, email them if you have to. Make sure they're watching tonight. Let's get ready to go in the word of prayer and use this time wisely that we have. Father, we thank you so much for the word tonight. Thank you that it will enlighten us. It will bring hope. It will bring strength. It will bring comfort to us as we hear the word of God. We thank you that you will indeed glorify your name. I thank you, Father, that you will think through my mind and you will speak through my lips a relevant word in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right. Come on. Let's phone tree. I need the phone tree to do what you do. Let's make sure that everybody who's under your authority, that you make sure that they watch and tune in to tonight's program. Now, we're dealing with part two of a powerful teaching on sharp points uh, called Selah. That's the one word subject. This is part two of it called Selah. Selah. Say that with me. Selah. That's what we're talking about. Now, we said to you that the law of reflection allows growth to catch up with us, with you and I. The law of reflection allows growth to catch up with you. If you want to be a person that continually grows and continually develops, you have to be a person who reflects. We said that we must not let people that we meet, experiences that we have, pass us by without reflecting on them. We said that we must pause each and every day if we want to be successful, we got to pause each and every day. Each and every day, we must take or call a timeout. We told you how the, in football games, in basketball games, you have the coaches that will every now and then call a timeout. The timeout is so that they can begin to reflect, look at what's going on. When they see the momentum is shifting, 
toward the other team and the team is about to run away with the game, the coach will take a timeout. And it's important the way that they use those timeouts because sometime at the end of the game, a game can be won or lost on the basis of whether or not the coach or the team has another timeout left. So they have to use their timeouts wisely. But each and every day, we need to be able to pull away and call a timeout on life and listen and let God begin to download more into us so that the creativeness, so that the wisdom, so that the knowledge that God has put in us can be applied into our lives even the more. We said that it's been said a meaningful silence is always better than meaningless words. Please write that statement down. It's worth you remembering. A meaningful silence is always better than meaningless words. Sometimes people speak meaningless words is because they're not pausing. Now, remember, we said that John Maxwell gives three questions that we need to ask ourselves at the end of each day. We gave you those last week. We're going to hit them real quick. Number one, what did I learn today? Number two, how can I apply what I learned today? And number three, how can I pass on what I learned today? Those three questions. What did I've learned today? How can I apply what I learned today? And how can I pass on what I've learned today? Because each and every one of us want to help other people. We want to be a blessing. Remember the Abrahamic covenant was, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. God wants to make our lives a blessing to other people. So we want to make sure that we take the information, that we take our experiences and wealth of knowledge that we've learned throughout the years and we pass it on to other people. That's what leaving a legacy is all about. Now, we said to you that C-Law, C-Law, S-E-L-A-H, C-Law is the Hebrew verb, C-Law, C-E-L-A-H, which has to do with suspension of music, a pause. The word C-Law means to lift up and to exalt. So we're talking about how that in the book of Psalms and the book of Habakkuk, you'll notice that this word Selah is used and we need to pay attention to what is being said. It is a technical musical term, probably showing accentuation, a pause and an interruption. We said that the word Selah means to pause in his presence. To think about it, to pause in his presence. It is perhaps a musical direction, but traditionally interpret as a blessing, meaning forever. In other words, what you just read or what you just heard is something that you should think about and forever keep in your mind or forever keep on your heart because it is beneficial to you and I. Certain things that are being said, you don't want to let go of. You want to hold on to. That's why anytime you hear a great man and woman of God, if they're doing good preaching and good teaching, it should always cause you and I to think, not just feel good, but to think that while you're hearing the word, you should be having some sea law moments, some moments in which you got to write down what you just heard. Or you got to pause and think about what you just heard because it was just so mind blowing. And that's why oftentimes a good preacher or a good teacher of the word will say some things that the Holy Spirit gave to them to say. And then they'll say, let me say it again. Oftentimes when I'm ministering, I go, wow, I said, let me say that again because I want it to resonate. I want you to think about it. I want you to understand that it's worth saying again. Read your Bible. The Bible said by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So oftentimes God is reiterating and saying many things that he wants us to know again. 
Let's say, for example, in Psalms 24, Psalm 24 says what? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Now, that's that's something worth you pausing about and thinking about. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. This is not the devil's earth. This earth does not belong to the devil. The devil is the God of the system, the arrangement and the order, the chaotic order of the way things are being governed and ruled. But he's not the God, amen, of the earth. He's the God of this world, the system, the arrangement, the order. But God is the owner of this earth. And he gave the earth to the children of men. Psalm 115, verse 16. We've been talking about that in our Bible study about prayer. But notice in Psalm 50 and verse 12, God repeats that same thing. God says to us in Psalm 50 and verse number 12, you don't have to turn there. But God says in Psalm 50 and verse uh, 12, he said, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. So God is saying, look, I own everything. If I were hungry, I ain't got to tell you because you can't provide for me because it's mine. The world is mine and the fullness thereof. So we need to understand how important it is for us to have Selah moments. Now, listen, the word Selah is a Hebrew word that occurs uh, I'm mean, going to use uh, 74 times in the Hebrew Bible, 74 times. The word Selah is the Hebrew word that occurs 71 times in the book of Psalms and three times in the book of Habakkuk. What did I say? 74 times in the Hebrew Bible, 71 uh, times in the book of Psalms and three times in the book of Habakkuk. The word Selah itself indeed causes us to pause and consider what God may be saying, even when we don't fully understand. Selah, a Selah moment, Selah times gives us an opportunity to take a moment away from this crazy, busy, nonstop life we all tend to live and consider the immense mysteries and wonders of God. So God wants us each and every day, especially if we are people who read and meditate in the word of God. A lot of time when you're reading the Bible, all of a sudden you just stop, close your Bible, shut your eyes and have to see law, pause and think about what you just read. Pause and think about what you are meditating on. I also believe, and I said this to you last time, see law means to consider of it Take advice and speak your minds. Consider of it. Take advice and speak your minds. Now, it's not true ever because a preacher or anybody else says it. It's only true because the word of God backs it up. And you go to Judges 19 and verse 30. And I talked to you about that last time when this, this, this these people, the sons of Belial, were wicked men and they just raped and molested the concubine of a certain man. And then the man takes his wife and cuts her into pieces and sends her body all the way around to the tribes. Amen. After this man had done his wife like that. Now, when you get somebody, he raped the woman. He raped the woman. All right. All right. Judges 19 and 30. Judges. He raped the concubine of this man. Okay. All right. Judges 19 and 30 says, and it was so that all that saw it said. There was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of Egypt. I mean, out of the land of Egypt until this day. And look what they said. Consider it. Take advice and speak your minds. That's sea law. Consider it. Take advice and speak your minds. In other words, he said they were saying this thing is so egregious. That people would take this man. Now, remember, if you study the Bible, you will find that this man stops by an old man's house. The old man knows that, hey, 
when these people are in my house, I am to protect them. I'm not to let anything happen to them. And these sons of Belial come there. They want the men. Their minds are perverted. They want the man that is in his house. But the old man said, no, 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 no. You cannot have this man. He's my guest. Amen. And so what happens is these men of Belial take this man's concubine. And again, they rape her all night long and do all kinds of craziness with her. And the next day, amen, uh, as she's there at the door, he opens up the door and it's her and she's dead. And he cuts her into pieces and sends her around so that the people can take vengeance against the sons of Belial. The devil is a wicked person. I'm telling you, he's wicked. He's evil. And all this craziness, rape, murder, killing. Amen. Don't think it's just coincidental. It is the devil being behind it. Now, you need to see law about that. We need to see law about what we are doing with our time. I said that to you last time. We need to see law about what we're doing with our time. We need to see law about what we're doing with our money. And we need to see law about what we're doing with our lives. We need to think about it. Consider. Speak our minds about what are we doing with our time. Are we spending it in ways that we can look back and say, Lord, I thank you that I live such and such a time and I accomplish what you have called for me to accomplish in the earth. Amen. Now, let's go to these scriptures that relate to sea law that we were just getting into last week. We're going to go to them now and look at these in the book of Psalms, the book of Habakkuk. OK, let's go to Psalms three. Verses two through four and verse eight. Let's look at what is God saying that causes them to put this term see law behind what is being said. All right. Let's look at it in Psalm three, verse two through four and verse eight. It says many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. See law. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my, excuse me, of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. Salvation belong unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. Now we see in these verses. Psalms three verses two through four and verse eight. We find three. Selah moments. We find three Selah moments. And we said Selah oftentimes is like an orchestra. If an orchestra is playing a song, all of a sudden that song builds up to a crescendo and then all of a sudden it goes boom and he stops. The song is not over, but they built that song up and they want you to pause and think about what has just been sung or what has just been played. Because God wants us to have Thinking moments, moments of reflection, moments of evaluation, moments so that we can consider and uh, take advice and speak our minds. All right, let's look at it. Verse two says, many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. And then he says, see law. Think about that. That some people have the audacity to believe. That God cannot help you and I. That what they are doing against us is so atrocious that God himself can bring us out. Now, that's the mind of the devil and that's the mind of wicked people being used of the devil. They think and they say that there is no help for us in God. See law, the audacity of man to ever believe that he or she can stop God, that he or she is stronger than God. Our help is always in the name of the Lord. God can always and will always be there as a present help in trouble. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. God has the ability and the power and the splendor and the glory to help us. 
So it is a foolish thought to mess with a child of God. It is a foolish thing to think that you can stop God. So he said, see law. Look at verse three and verse four. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. Glory. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. And then he says, see law. Think about that. Pause in his presence. Hallelujah. Think about it. Who's the glory and the lifter up of your head? Who's going to make sure that you come out with victory? Who is the one that you cry out to and will hear you from his holy heel? It's God. So he said, think about it. God is the glory. He is your shield. The Bible said that God will make favor surround us like a shield. God will shield his people. Hallelujah. And then in verse eight, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Salvation means what? Deliverance. It means your way out. It belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing, thy blessing is upon thy people. See law. See law. He wants you to think about this. That the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and add no sorrow is on our lives. I'm telling you, Proverbs 10 and 22, I told you, read it first thing in the morning. Look at it and then look at it at night before you go to bed. I'm telling you, pastors and leaders are getting supernatural results because it was a word that God gave to us. And I'm looking at now with all the things going on in our society that we need to know that the blessing of the Lord is not a car. It's not a house. It's not a money. It's that that brings a car. It brings a house. It brings the money. But the blessing of the Lord is a pronunciation over your life. When God says in blessings, I will bless you and in multiplying, I will multiply you. The blessing. I like that song. Amen. That uh, Donna Lawrence made. He called it the blessing of Abraham because God blessed Abraham and said, I'm blessing you and your seed. What did Abraham have? A pronunciation over his life that anybody that blessed him. They will be blessed of God. Anybody that curse him, they will be cursed of God. That's what we have. He said, thy blessing is upon your people. Hallelujah. So if we're saved. We are blessed people. We say we're blessed. Why do we say we blessed? How are, we, how are you doing today? I'm blessed. It ain't just something we're saying. We got to believe the word. We are agreeing with God. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we go in. We're blessed when we go out. We are empowered to prosper. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are doing it, I know some people are not doing it, but hey, that's okay. Amen. You don't have to do it. If you're not led of the Lord to do it, you don't have to do it. But I'm telling you what God said. Amen. And the book of 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 20, the last part of the verse said, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Why do you think this is important? I know it's important because what you put before your eyes and what you meditate on begins to come in your life. And God wants us to not get caught up in and trapped and ensnared by all that's going on around us. He wants us to look at the fact that the blessing of the Lord make it rich. Make it rich, lavishly supplies. How and he he added no sorrow with it. Pastor, Hallelujah, Pastor Amen. Today. Pastor uh, texted me today, uh, 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 talked to me today, Amen. And and one even uh, 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 one uh, person day I went to the barber shop, Amen today. And uh, God just blesses. He just knows how to bless, man. Let's go to our uh, Psalm four verses two. Through four. Let's go to this. Now we're walking through the book of Psalms where the Selah moments are, where the word pause means. Now you can do that again 
off any scripture. You pause, you think about it, you meditate. All right. Now look at Psalm four verses two through four. It says, O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing see law? In other words, God is asking the question, how long will men love doing empty, foolish, cynical, crazy stuff? Think about it. You got people that are over 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 years old and still not saved, still not born again, still out here drinking beer, drinking wine, drinking liquor, some even doing crack cocaine. How long will we love this kind of stuff? How long will it be before finally we say enough is enough? How long will it be before we finally decide that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? How long will it be before we finally recognize that Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to a man or a woman? How long will it be before we recognize that, hey, God put his glory, his splendor, his brightness on us and we don't need to turn it into something else? Hallelujah. That men begin to love men and women begin to love women. And call that marriage or relationship. Come on. We don't want to turn the glory of God into a mess like that. No. Look at verse three. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, see law. Hallelujah. In other words, God's saying, look, I want somebody to be godly. I want somebody to be set apart for my glory. I want somebody that will let me use their hands, their feet, their mouth. I want somebody that will glorify me with their life. Hallelujah. And that's the church. The word church is the Greek word ecclesia, which means called out. We see a shadow and a picture of it with Moses. Moses, his name means what? Drawn out. He was drawn out of the water. God drew the church out. And notice Moses was help the people come out of Egypt. The church is to help the world. I mean, help people come out of sin, come out of darkness. Come out of the world system. Hallelujah. And we're telling the devil, let God's people go. Let those sons go. Let those daughters go that belong to God. Hallelujah. Let my nephew go. Let my cousin go. They belong to God. Devil, loose your grip over them in the name of the Lord. Well, I'm out of time. My time just going by fast. Again, we're going to walk you through the book of Psalms and the book of Habakkuk. Amen. And we're looking at this one word subject, Selah. Listen, each and every day, you're in a hustle bustle world. Each and every day, you need some time where you are by yourself and you pause and you evaluate what I need to do. Did I get it done? We've been preaching a message called get it done. We got to get this task done. And I'm telling you, the enemy will have you wasting time with people, with things that will be time killers, dream killers. You don't need time killers and dream killers. You don't need things stealing your time, stealing your dreams. You need things that you're doing that will cause you to get the most out of your life. One of the most fascinating things is to know that Jesus in three and a half years, he got everything accomplished that the father wanted him to get accomplished. He left nothing undone that the father wanted him to get done. Wow. What a fascinating man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He didn't waste time. He didn't waste moments. And you and I need to see law and evaluate. I'm out of time. Gotta go. Amen. Hallelujah. 
You need to see law and pause sometime just to get yourself rejuvenated, just to get yourself stirred back up in the things of God. I'm not talking about just praying. I'm talking about getting alone and thinking. Wealthy people think they do a lot of thinking and God wants you to think. Whatever things are pure, just we'll get into that scripture next time. Amen. Well, not next time. It's, it's going to be a while before we get into it. But it's found in the book of Philippians. God said, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We need Salah moments. I'm out of time. Got to go. If you're not saved, if you desire to be saved, what in the world are you spending your time on? Vanity and leasing, things that mount to nothing. The Bible call it unfruitful works of darkness. You need to be saved. You need to give your life to Jesus tonight. You need to say, dear God, come into my life. Save me tonight. I'm ready to surrender my all to you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again for me to be saved. Save me tonight. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm ready to be your child and for you to be my God. Pray that with me. If you did, give us a call at 252-563-5382. 252-563-5382. Also, I need you to continue to watch us here on this platform. We're here every Tuesday night at 730 and every Thursday at 7 o'clock. We do this program called Sharp Points. We want to sharpen you. Every Tuesday night is our Bible study. And every Thursday is Sharp Points. Every Sunday morning, we are back in the building. Every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And our praise and worship starts at 1030. The only time we don't is because there have been some technical difficulties or the glory. I mean, yeah, our praise and worship starts at 10. I'm sorry. Preaching and teaching Facebook (laughs) and YouTube starts at 1030 that you get this good preaching. And we are teaching had been teaching rather on get it done. But this Sunday morning, we're going to share some things that the Holy Spirit gave to me. Amen. Uh, a fresh vision he gave to me. Amen. And I haven't shared it with only two people. Amen. And I, I'm telling you, and God gave me a word to go with this message. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be great. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, look, there are several ways to give several ways to give. Amen. We are sowing into good ground. Newness of life is good ground. Here how you here's how you give. The first way you give is by check or money order. You can mail it to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462. Please pay attention to that P.O. Box. We don't want you to send it to the wrong post office. P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. And on behalf of my lovely wife, Reese and I, we want to thank many of you who are sowing into the ministry. Not one pin of that goes to me. That's for newness of life. Christian Center. We appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Also, the other way you give is download the mobile app. Download the mobile app. And when you download the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O mobile app, you can type in newness of life Christian Center. It's going to pop up. The church is going to pop up and you can sow that way. And many of you doing that. And we appreciate you that are not a part of a church, but you want to tie somewhere. You want to give somewhere yeah. and, or you want to send a donation. We appreciate that. Now, to bless my wife, not personally, this is for us personally. Go to your cash app, hit the dollar sign and type in R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P. Now, remember this month, I want you to bless your pastor. This month is pastoral month. This is the time for you to appreciate your leaders. Appreciate great men and women of God who sacrifice, who serve you, who are giving themselves to prayer and to the study of the word so you can grow. Appreciate them. Show them that, hey, pastor, you've been giving us spiritual things and we want to give you some natural things back. Bless your man of God. Bless your woman of God. Bless those who are feeding you with knowledge and understanding. Come on, bless the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Don't muzzle the mouth of the ox that tread out the corn. Sow into them and bless them this month. Also, amen, I want to send a special shout out to all of you who are having birthdays in October. The month of October is a special month because Tatum, Tatum Rashad, that's right, that's my little grandson, Amen. Oh, he, his birthday was October the 
3rd. He was 11 years old, which was Monday. And uh, happy birthday, Tayden. Shout out to you, Vanika and uh, Dalen and Kaysen. And a uh, special shout out to Tayden. He's 11 years old now. Thank God for all of you who sold. That's right. Some of you who start watching this, you start blessing Tayden because there's a cash app. And that is the dollar sign. Vanika, V-A-N-N-E-I-K-A, Sharp, S-H-A-R-P. That Cash app, Vanika, V-A-N-N-E-I-K-A, Sharp, S-H-A-R-P-E. Thanks for those of you who did it. And if you want to do it and you haven't done it, amen, he would definitely appreciate it. Amen. 11 years old. Amen. And the doctor said that he was going to be a Down syndrome child. Thank God for a miracle. Well, we love you tonight. You have a blessed day. Sunday morning. 1030 right here on this platform. You have a blessed night. Love all of you. Shout out to my brother, Bishop Ronald Wayne oh, Sharp, a preaching, teaching man of God. Amen. He comes on this platform. Amen. Each and every Sunday morning and each and every Wednesday night. Shout out to my mom, Mother uh, Sharp, Shirley Sharp, wonderful mother, and my sister, Pastor Susan Sharp, powerful woman of God. Jackie Bellman said here in Vince um, anniversary on October 8th. Oh, wow. That, oh, Vincent Bellamy, my man. And Evangelist Jackie That's Bellamy, Saturday. their anniversary. Yeah. Wedding anniversary. Uh -huh. How long have they been married? Do you know that? How Amen. Long How long? Have I put it on? I got to go. Amen. How long uh -huh. they been married? Amen. Amen. Shout out to them in a special way celebrating their wedding anniversary. That is awesome. Uh, Glendora Boney said her husband's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, Glendora. James Boney. Okay, that's, okay, James Boney. Boney. Shout out to James tomorrow. on tomorrow. Happy birthday. Anybody else whose birthday in October, we want to recognize the October yeah. people. Jackie said seven years. Happy okay, they've been, okay, been married seven years. Seven, 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 seven. seven. that perfect number. The number of perfection. All right, happy anniversary to you. We love you. And you. she did such a tremendous job teaching about crying, about crying and reasons to it. cry, the benefits and the blessings of crying. Amen. That, that crying doesn't mean you weak. Amen. In fact, in, in this book we wrote called Death, A Need to Understand. I don't have one up here. because Anyway, Death, A Need to Understand. I talk about grief and how to deal with grief. Anyway, you have a blessed night. Gotta go. Amen. No, 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 because I, I, a person got that one today. Yeah. All right, you be blessed. Have a blessed night until Sunday morning at 10, 1030. What time? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. We start at in person, <laughs> in person but 1030 on for Facebook. on Facebook and YouTube. See you Sunday morning at 1030. You have a blessed night. God bless. Bye, yeah.